Hey everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning at Relevant Life Church. We're so excited to be doing service with you together and know that so many of you joining us today are new to the church. We want to connect with you. So in the description of this video, go click the link for the digital connect card. Give us your info just so that you can stay up to date with what's going on in the church and that we can start a relationship with you and get to know you a little bit. Those digital connect cards are also an incredible way to share prayer requests, praise reports. Man, we're praying for you guys throughout the week. And if you fill one of those out, it just allows us to be a little bit more specific in how we're praying for you. So take advantage of that opportunity as well. And I also just wanna thank you so much for your generosity, man. You guys as a church have stepped up so big during this season and it's empowered the church not only to be able to do what we do and reach our community, but also to be generous with others in our community as well. And I just have heard some amazing testimonies of how your generosity is really changing lives and it's carrying some people through this season who are going through a tough time. So thank you guys so much. If you do want to give, the link is also there in the description for that. Now let's go ahead and join Pastor Travis and listen in on this incredible sermon. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Church at Home. My name is Travis. I'm the lead pastor here at Relevant Life Church. My wife, Becky, and I are just honored that you would join us and that you would tune in today. And we're in this series called Secure, Finding Truth in Chaotic Times. We want to find truth, not just truth, but we want to find God's truth. And kind of the theme, the heart, the, the, the big idea for this series is that God wants us to be aligned with him. And that aligning with God, it brings security and confidence. We want to deal with our insecurities. And so I, I don't know about you, but I kind of am a little bit of a control freak. And my insecurities show when I'm tired or, or when I feel like things are chaotic, I kind of go to like get control and, and, and we're in a season, we're in a, a season of life where there's things that are happening to us where it feels like we've lost control or the ability to have control. Meaning, I want to be able to go where I want, when I want, and how I want to. And now I have to think to myself, is this really an essential trip right now? Is this an essential trip? And, and you know, and I lost the control or the ability or the right to, you know, of course, we know that the government is saying these are, these are um, not mandated laws, but these are, we, we highly recommend it. And so I want to be compliant. I want to do my part to, to protect people. You know, I thought about preaching in a mask, but I thought that might be a little bit awkward. So I haven't done that. Um, but, but we're in a, we're in a place where we've, we've, lost some control and and i i love technology and they, they have like the ability in your home to kind of gain technology like you can have more control let me say it this way sorry you can have technology that helps you gain control and there's this de these devices we have these like smart devices kind of all over our home and and we have like smart light bulbs and, and I can like turn off light bulbs because my kids, they just leave lights on all over the place. And um, I can control my thermostat and like all from my phone. I kind of love it. It's like, yes, I'm in control. I'm like in control. And, and during this season and not just this season, but in life, like I hate it when my kids don't do what I ask them to do. And so parents, if you're here and you're super bored with life and you're tired of your kids not complying, listen, I've got a pro tip for you right now. Um, part of why my kids don't listen is they're doing their own thing. And a lot of times that's playing video games or talking on their phone or, and, and so they have this, you know, they have, there's two things that you could do, parents. You could get a smart router, which if your kids don't have a cell phone, it shuts down. You can just be on your phone and just turn off the Wi-Fi. 
My kids hate that, especially when they're like playing an online game and all of a sudden they lose internet. So I've done that before. But they have, maybe you don't have that, but they have these, these um, things. Are, this, is, this is a smart adapter, like a, a power adapter just on Amazon. Like if you want to, to be able to control, and you can even say like, on your Google Assistant or Alexa, hey Alexa, turn off Zane's PlayStation. Like you can name this thing like Zane's PlayStation and he could be playing it and you could be saying, it's dinner! Or, you know, like, because that's when my, my kids never come when I'm like yelling, I didn't hear you, I didn't hear you. Like, I'm losing control. It's like I'm just preaching about it and it's causing me anxiety. But these things you could like, connect that to their video games or their TVs or whatever and just say, cut that thing, you know, stop that thing and power off. And it's just sometimes it feels good. It feels, so that made more noise than I thought. It feels good to be in control sometimes. It feels good to, to be in control. And, and sometimes our insecurities rise when we feel like we don't have control or when we're in a position where we've lost control and God wants us to really ultimately give him control. And so today, when we talk about overcoming our, our insecurities and being secure and aligning with God, today in particular, we're going to talk about how can we give God control because, and I, I want to talk about Rules. Um, rules are like the lowest form to create engagement. Meaning like this, in Galatians, the book of Galatians talks all about this. That, that God doesn't want the rules to be the reason that we serve him or follow him. And sometimes when we are losing control or we feel like we're out of control, we'll like try to resort to the rules or the law. Like, I, I want to feel better. I just feel better if I'm just doing this, this, and this. And if I'm not doing this, this, and this, then I feel like, oh man, I'm really failing at life. And, 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 and the rules aren't the goal. The, the rules and even like God's principles, they're there to help us. They're there to protect us. They're there, they're there to help us thrive. They're there, like there's financial uh, principles in scripture that, that help us, you know, talk like talking about tithing and, and giving 10%. And there's, there's things about generosity, like that, that, that we should be a generous people. There's things about love and, and protecting our heart. And there's all kinds of principles in scripture that are great. But when you have to enforce a rule, when you have to say, if you don't, you know, if you don't meet this requirement, I think that that's the lowest level of getting people to be engaged. What God wants to get to and what, what I think even a goal as parents, you know, I want my kids when, they, when I say, it's time for dinner to come up, not just because they're hungry, but because they want to be in relationship. And when I don't have that relationship, then I get ticked and I grab my smartphone and I turn their stuff off. And that's not the right response. And so, but, but, but God wants to get us in a place where we are confident in our relationship with him and we're engaged in his kingdom and there's something supernaturally taking place. There's this growth and this maturity, not just because it's the rules or the right thing to do. And, and I just want to preach a little bit about the gospel. Jesus fulfilled the entire law because he knew that humanity couldn't do it. And, and even in Galatians, it says that if you try to, to fulfill one part of the law and you break it, actually it's in Romans, then you're guilty of, of breaking the whole law. And so the, the, the goal in our faith and our Christianity and, and in building security, the goal shouldn't be about the rules or obeying the law. The goal is about faith. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 39, it talks about this. And it's just such a, it's one of my favorite scriptures in all of the Bible 
It's in Hebrews 10. It's in 35, 39. This is the NIV version. It says, so do not throw away your confidence. You need confidence. I need confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere. Why? So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what has what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming and will come and not delay. And this is giving a quotation of a scripture. It says, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. So I want to give you some context about this passage of Scripture. There were people that were getting persecuted. Some of them were being killed because they were Christians. They, some of them were being persecuted by the Romans. Some of them were being persecuted by other Jews. There were these people that were saying, we are followers of Jesus. And they were being uh, sometimes tortured for that. Paul talks about being beaten and flogged. and I mean, every single disciple was put to death because of their faith. Every single apostle, I'm sorry, every single apostle during this time was put to death. Fox, Fox's Book of Martyrs, you should check it out. It's crazy, the stories of how these apostles died and they shrank back. Or they didn't shrank back. They lived by faith. They, they didn't pull away because of the persecution. And so this is what he's saying. The writer of Hebrews is saying, you need confidence. And, and the confidence isn't about... Uh, a rule. Confidence comes from like engaging with God. And so one way we can deal with our insecurities and we can, when, when these fears and these insecurities arise, we can know that something takes place when we say, you know what, I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to align with God. See, faith is aligning with God and it's choosing to to uh, align with his truth, and it's not subjective, and we're going to talk about that here in a second, but my faith is, it's aligning with the truth that's greater than myself, and when I do that, I get access to something that is greater than myself, because when I, when I choose faith, when I choose to operate in a confidence that comes from aligning myself with God's word, it says that I'm aligning myself with heaven and I'm going to receive the promises of God. I'm going to receive what God has promised. And, and I, just want to, I just want to just pray and believe that God is going to give you what you need to persevere in this season and that you, that you won't shrink back. We, I love the, 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 the affirmation and the declaration. We are not of those who shrink back. Come on, somebody. We are not of those who shrink back. I think that's a great affirmation. I am not of those who shrink back. I'm not going to wuss out when it gets hard. I'm not going to back away from this battle. God wants to build confidence in me. He wants to help me overcome. Not because, you know, and, and, and there's a difference between faith and control. I'm going to respond with faith and trust that I'm going to do my part. And, and God's going to do his part. There's, there's something beautiful about that. Because, because when we align with, with heaven and we align with the truth of God, we know that there's something that's greater. Even if my, my temporary senses are experiencing fear. And, and I just want to talk about that for a second. Do you know that you are physically wired? You are wired to experience fear. Have you heard of fight or flight? Like there, it's in your biology. Like if there's something that comes along, if you meet a big bear in the woods, there's a, God gave you the senses to be able to say, it's time for me to, to, you know, actually I was going to say run, but we don't run away from bears, right? Like, um, we carry bear spray and then shoot them in the face, like, like, and then run. Uh, but, but like, there's this, the, we're wired to experience fear. We're wired to, and so, so it's, it's important. And then we talked about last week, sometimes, or we talked about in week one, that sometimes our, 
our, our fears, our pain can enhance our fears, our traumas, our, our distrust, our, we, we can have more fears. And, and God's saying, listen, the answer, even in the face of death, in the face of destruction, I want you to live by faith. Live by faith and realize that the truth that you're believing in isn't subjective. So I want to say this because I think this is super important. God's truth isn't subjective. Our ability to receive, believe, and act on God's truth can be subjective. Because we have what's called bias. Bias. Have you ever heard something and you're like, oh, I don't believe that to be true? Well, why don't you believe that to be true? Well, because my grandpappy said something different, or my grandma, what does that mean? I have bias, or I grew up in something different. I grew up in a, an environment where we didn't do that, or we didn't believe that, or we didn't say that, or we didn't live like that, or we didn't act like that. And we, ha- we all have different kinds of bi- bias. We have religious bias. We have bias according to our upbringing. We have bias that happens from being conditioned to certain things when we're around certain things like we have the ability to filter truth and receive truth based off of our personality but there's all kinds of different ways but that doesn't change whether or not something is true it doesn't change whether or not God's truth is true and there's sometimes there's truth that in order for us to experience and align with heaven, there's sometimes we have to go through some things for God to build our faith so that we can overcome and we can, we can stand up over those insecurities. And I want to share about a scripture and just some things that we can learn about overcoming insecurity. It's in Mark chapter 4. This will be our main text, verses 35 through 41. Just encourage you, if you have the opportunity to grab your Bible, you know, my kids don't always know, like, I know exactly where at, you know, they can pick up their used version and, and click on the right book, and, and maybe that's how you are. It's primarily how I read God's Word right now, but it's a great time to just grab a physical Bible, open it up, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, says, that day, I'm going to stop. If you don't have a physical Bible and you want one, just let us know and we'll send you one. All right, here we go. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 and 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. It nearly tipped over. And Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Jesus, or teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then he went, then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and each of them, and and they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. That's in Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 35 and 41. So just talking about, again, our series is called Secure, and, and so we're overcoming our insecurities. And if you look at a little bit of the context of this verse, you see Jesus, the preceding verses, and in even other different parts of, of the Gospels, Jesus had like this full day of ministry. He was like ministering to people, there were miracles, there was, and, and he is just tired. He is beat. And so he goes up and he he has this cushion and he's like passed out. Like REM sleep happening. Like the REM cycle was in full. Like he is just like crashed out. And his disciples were, some of them, they they were like professional sailors. They knew how to fish. They knew where to go. And, and they knew exactly what to do during this time when there was storms like they were used to it. 
And Jesus is like sleeping through this storm. And I just was, the reason why I wanted to preach on this passage of scripture is I think that it's interesting because the disciples were in a place where their gifts and their talents were not enough to get through what they were experiencing. And sometimes we get into a place in, where we have found confidence and security, like I can work really hard and, and, and make money and put it in my paycheck, but then we lose the ability to even be able to work like in the situation that we're currently in. Or something happens to us that are completely beyond our control and we realize, wow, I don't have as much control over situations as I... And this, this is what the disciples were faced with. They were in a situation, it was beyond themselves. But I just want to talk about a couple things in mind that I think will help us and it'll give us perspective and it'll help us align with truth that isn't just a subjective truth, subjective to our bias or our past experiences or our past pain, but that when we align with heaven and we align with what God says, we can learn something. The disciples learned something. See, Jesus was the one that said to get into the boat. He was the one that said, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Side. The first thing to, to note about this passage of scripture is that Jesus had a destination in mind. You need to know, just like we talked about this last week, getting a vision for your life. God has a vision and a destination for you in mind. And sometimes when you are in a position that is beyond your own uh, capacity or your ability or your gifts or your your gifts you've given your best and you don't have the answer for the thing that's in front of you the disciples had given their best they were professional sailors but they didn't have an answer for the squall what a funny word right I just think that's funny like when is the last time you said you like looked outside and said there's a squall coming honey like you just don't use that terminology but they didn't have what it took to deal with with the storm, but Jesus had a destination in mind. He has a destination in mind for you. He has a destination in mind for me. No matter what we're going through, no matter what my fears are saying, whether they're rational or irrational fears, no matter what I'm experiencing, God has a destination in mind for you. He has one for me. Second point, sometimes Jesus deals with our insecurities away from the crowds. It says here in verse 35, it says that leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. So Jesus was in the boat and they left the crowds behind. I think that this speaks to, it's just like when we shared like three weeks, a uh, few weeks ago, I can't remember how long ago it was, but we were talking about the widow and the miracles that were happening behind closed doors. And, and this is what is taking place. Like, there's something that happens when you get into a proximity and it's just you and a few other people. And, and God, like, took them out of the crowds. The crowds is like, oh, the ministry's happening. The miracle's happening. The anointing is flowing. And there's just some character building that's, that happens away from the crowd. I, I love this. this. This theme is over and over in scripture. David was a shepherd before he killed a giant. He was faithful with, with what God had given him before he became a king. Sometimes God puts us in a boat when we don't want to be in a boat. He interrupts our normal routine because he has something in mind. I think God has something in mind for his church. He has something in mind for you. He has something in mind and there's, there's a separation and there's a seclusion happening and right now we have a choice. We're either going to respond to it. We're going to let this stirring that's been happening and, and we're going to respond to the, 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 the presence of God, the spirit of God, the will of God or we're going to shrink back and I don't want to be one of those people that shrink back. The Bible says that I'm not one of those people. So I'm going to, in this season, where I'm away from the crowds, where you're away from the crowds, you're away from your normal routine, let's deal with our fears, our insecurities. Point three, sometimes things can only be learned through experience. See, the disciples were in a place where they had never experienced this, this squall, this storm, 
this trial. I have never experienced this. I have never experienced church online like this. Of course, we live stream and we, we try to do things digitally, but this is something completely off the charts. I've never experienced a pandemic like this. I've, I've never seen thousands of people get sick. I've never seen people walk around with masks on their face. I got my bandana. I feel like I'm a gang member when I go out there. I like when I text the police, like, listen, I'm not representing, like, Snow Crips Bloods, like, I love Jesus, like, maybe need to get, like, a Jesus bandana or something, but, but this is something different, and, and there's, ex- there's things that we're learning, there's experiences that we're happening right now, there's faith that's being exercised right now, there, there, there's things that are taking place where I am not going to learn, and you're not going to learn any other way. The disciples needed to have a revelation that Jesus had the ability to circumvent nature and speak to storms and quiet it and say, you know what, I can speak to that storm, and you can experience peace, and we can experience peace, and then I'm going to rebuke you in the process. He's like, why are you tripping? Why are you so afraid? Don't you have faith? Don't you have faith? I can't help but think to myself that the Lord is saying something similar to us, to those of us who confess that Jesus is the Christ, that he defeated death, that he was in a grave for three days, and that that death couldn't defeat him, that he took my shame, my sorrow, my pain, my trauma, and he died to those things and, and so that I could live with him for eternity, that I could be with God, and Corona's got me down? No way! I'm not going to shrink back. I'm not going to wuss out. There's some things that I'm learning in this boat right now. God's got me in a boat right now, and I'm with Jesus, and I'm with my crew. And I can only learn. I can only get faith, the faith that God wants me to get by faith being in a storm that's beyond my capacity, beyond my abilities, beyond my best efforts. And your fears might be getting the best of you today. But I think Jesus wants to speak to your storm. Let him speak to your storm. Let him speak to your circumstances. There's some things that you can only learn in the boat. There's some things that you can only learn in the boat. And there's a couple things with that. You get to learn who Jesus is, and you also get to see who's your crew. Who are the people? Man, there's people that I would want with me in that boat. There's people that I would want with me going through that. Who's your crew right now? Who are your friends? If you don't have a crew, if you don't have a community, if you need a boat, come on, we got care groups all over. We want to care for you. We want to We want to help you walk through this. You do not have to be in this alone. Jesus is with you, but the disciples, the crew was with them too. And even though he was rebuking them, like, where's your faith at? There was something that they learned about Jesus that they weren't going to learn any other way. So I'm going to ask you a question. I just want to ask you a question. What are you afraid of today? What are you really afraid of? What do you what like what fears are causing you anxiety and depression or oppression? Like what are some of the things that and maybe it's something that you don't feel like you can control and you are at the end of yourself. Come on, I believe that's the savior of the world that the Messiah wants to speak to you in the midst of your storm, in the midst of whatever you're going through. He wants to bring peace that's beyond understanding and he wants to help alleviate your stress, your pain, so that what? You can keep going the direction that he has in mind for you, because remember, he has a destination in mind. I love this quote from Max Licato. Feed your fear. I'm sorry. Whoa, we don't want to feed your fear. Like, pastor, what are you talking about? Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Feed your faith. Starve your fears. Feed your faith, starve your fears. What are you feeding and what are you starving? Clearly right now, I am not starving my belly. 
I feel like all I get to do is make stuff. And like, I learned how to make sushi. It's amazing. And I learned, anyways, like I need to, instead of feeding my belly, I need to feed my faith. I need to hear from God. I need to let him speak to me. I need to quiet my heart and realize, man, God his voice is real. His truth is not subjective. I might have things that are keeping me from experiencing his truth, but God, I want to experience your truth. I want you to experience your truth. Stop looking at the storm as this awful, terrible thing and look at it as an opportunity for you and I to grow beyond these present circumstances. God is doing something in us. He's building something in us. And there's some things that we can only learn from, from experience. God wants to get you some experience. He wants to build something in you. I think that, 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 that we should come out of this like, have you ever seen that show like Dragon Ball Z? Like where the guy, he like goes like Super Saiyan. He like, like his hair like lights up. And, and I think that we should come out of this like that, where we are just on fire. We are, we are, we are, I saw that as a, as a, as a, a meme or something online that like Christians should just be coming out of this like super saiyan, like, come on, like I am prayed up and I am fired up and I am ready to go. But that only happens if we're feeding on the right thing. Don't let your fears get the best of you. Embrace the boat. Come on, quit thinking about what am I going to, when I'm just going to get out of this and, and when I can just go back to work and can just go back to school. And here's the scoop. If you don't deal with your, inse your insecurities in this season, they're still going to be there when you get to that next season. They're still going to be a, a part of your life when you get to that next season. God wants to do something in you in this season. He wants to do something in you now. He wants you to face your, fe your fears and feed your faith now. Embrace the boat. Instead of thinking, well, what could be, what should be? Like, let's talk, let's just deal with reality. Like, let's deal with what is in front of us. James chapter 1, verses 2 and through 4 says, Exer uh, says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you encounter trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Allow perseverance to finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You know what? I think God has maturity in mind for us. He has maturity in mind for us. He has confidence in mind for us. He wants us to take this opportunity in the boat to exercise faith. Anything that's worth any anything that's worth value can be tested. Let your faith be tested so that you can build strength in you and perseverance and let it do its work in you so that you can be mature, so that I can be mature. I love this line, not lacking anything. I want that for my life. I want that for your life. Not lacking anything. The last thing is this. In order for us to what, what I believe God wants us to learn from this passage of scripture is realize that Jesus isn't sleeping. He's already awake. I think that part of scripture is just funny. I actually think like he got up, like he was like deep sleep. He like got up and, you know, it's like crazy storm. The, the boat's about to capsize and he's just like looking at it and he like rebukes it and then he rebukes them and, and then he like, I think he just went like back to sleep. Like, dudes, I am going back to sleep. Like, I, I already know, like, I have a destination in mind. Like, we're going to get there. Like, it's not my time. And, and you know, I think so many times we we just, we might think that God is like, where is God at? You know, is he sleeping? Like, you know, I just got this image too, like sometimes in our prayer life, it might seem like heaven is silent, but God just wants us to like keep like knocking, like, Lord, 
I just want, I think we should just keep praying until this pandemic breaks and just keep praying so that, and just ask God to help the people that are in need in our city and in our community. And, and, and God, let us be a conduit during this time of your blessing and, and your grace. Lord, you're not sleeping. You, you, it might seem like that you're, that you're not present, but you are present. And I, I just want to say this with you. God's not just with you. He's in you. He's inside you. The Spirit of God lives in you. He's got a destination in mind. He's preparing, and I actually think that God is waking his people up. That when we get out of this season, when we respond to the boat that we're in, when we respond to the storms that we're in, and we see Jesus confront situations, and we see Jesus confront things, and we get a realization of Jesus that we wouldn't have had had we not been put in this situation, that we're going to come out of this with more confidence, with more purpose, with more vision, with more anointing, with more direction, with more focus, and we're going to come out of this like ready to go. What are you doing with your time? Are you feeding your faith? Are you starving your fear? Are you embracing the boat? And today, maybe you're watching and you're like, Pastor, this Jesus, I've never... I've never like had a relationship with him. I, this this relationship with God that you're talking about, like I'm, I'm maybe you're hearing this and you just feel like the Spirit of God like stirring you, like hey, there's there's more. Maybe you've had just like a you know like an intellectual assessment of who God is, but you've never actually allowed him into your boat. You've never allowed him into your situation, and 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 God wants to be a part of your life. He. He, he has a plan for you. He loves you. He's not mad at you for, for being afraid. He's not angry with you. He has a perspective that's different than us. And that's why I think he even corrected his disciples because he sees things differently than we see them. And, and I want his perspective. Maybe you want God's perspective today. If you've never said yes to allowing Jesus just to be the master, the, the savior of your life, the Lord of your life, if you've never allowed him to forgive you of your sins and if you've never allowed him to be your savior, today is the day. Let's pray right now for that. In your home, just bow your head, close your eyes. Just say, Jesus, I choose you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I turn away from my fear. I confess my sins. I ask for forgiveness and I confess that you're my Lord and my Savior and I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen, amen. If that was you, we are so proud of you and fired up for you. I just believe God's got, uh, I, I, we've seen people come to Christ almost every week since we've been online. It's the best thing ever. We are so excited for you. God has a plan and purpose for you. One of our pastors will share some next steps with you here in a minute. But I, before, as we, as we close and as, as we end, I just want to pray over you a blessing. Those of you who are tuning in, I just want to pray for faith to rise up and that God would give us eyes to see and faith to endure. Can we just pray as we end? God, thank you. Thank you for everyone that's tuning in. Thank you, Lord, for the discipline that they are, are practicing in this season to be close to you, to listen to you, to deal with their insecurities. God, I pray for any person that just feels overwhelmed today by the storm that they're in. Jesus, that you would speak to their storm, that you would silence their storm, that you would silence their fears, that they would get a perspective from heaven, that faith would be exercised, that they wouldn't shrink back. God, I pray for a supernatural confidence supernatural understanding, God, vision to see your destination that you have in mind and peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey everyone, thanks again for joining us at Relevant Life Church this morning. So glad that you're here and, and, and just want to say for those of you who made a commitment to Jesus today, maybe for the first time or maybe you recommitted your life to Christ, we want to go on that journey with you. It's so important that you tell somebody about your decision because you weren't meant to go through it alone. Tell a trusted friend or family member and let us know on your digital connect card. Fill out a digital connect card and let us know because we also want to send you one of these best is yet to come packets. We'll send this right to your mailbox and this is full of resources to help you get going on that journey. Also want to say if you're new to our church, whether that means this is your first time with us, your 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 second, your fifth, your tenth, but you haven't had a chance to get connected with our church, there is an after party. There's a link to a Zoom meeting in the description for an after party for you to get to know some of our staff and leaders and pastors here at the church. So click on that. We're going to start that right now.